Although there are already more than 7,000 confirmed Reality cases of coronavirus here in the U.S. Worst case scenarios in this country. Doctors and nurses there are um, on the forefront of an hospital. It was time to leave. More than 50,000 Americans have now died from this virus. And pain. And the number is for good. But let's back up a bit. We knew our time in Congo was limited, but didn't expect our departure to have the added obstacles caused by COVID-19. With closed airspaces and battened down borders, we had to be jump ready with limited expectation of seeing anything not strapped to our backs before Christmas, if ever again. My shop was on the cut list. Fortunately, a friend staying behind was interested in the setup, and we were able to give the tools that got me through Congo a new home. <sighs> One last look. All right, let's get on with it. After 14 hours in the air, we made it. As DRC was a level two country at the time, a federally mandated quarantine wasn't required, but we took the precaution anyway. Our chosen spot was sparse, but comfy. I wasn't too bothered. It gave me some good time to just chill out for a second and also start rebuilding my shop. We're all struggling right now, so I decided to go on Etsy and use my need for new tools to support local small business tool makers. And since I'm basically homeless until we make it to our next post in Denver, Colorado, I figured I'd start with hand tools. I grabbed a small table mounted vise, a draw knife, a pool saw, a hook knife, a carving knife, and a sharpening strop set. But these weren't the only tools I'd make it out with. After 14 days of isolation with no signs or symptoms, I went to see my family for the first time since coming home. And in exchange for helping my dad put together a lumber slash material storage rack, I got a few pretty epic hand-me-downs. But first, like it was for me, the rack. We started by framing out the three shelf beds. See, I'm helping. Then, we used a square to mark the height of where the rack should rest on all four post legs. Using brick blocks and clamps, we put the bottom shelf in place and secured with screws. With a little more brawn, we clamped the top shelf into place. And again, secured with screws. Finally, the last shelf. And that's a wrap. Now, time to load up the tools and start to point our compass west. The first to get loaded up was the Jet JJ8 two horsepower jointer, circa 1985. It has a six foot by eight inch bed with a straight cutter head that I'll likely swap out for a spiral if I can find one to fit. Before my time, my dad was a cabinet maker and these tools were put to good use. But time moved forward and these guys got stowed away in the shed, just waiting for me to pull them out.
The second is a three horsepower 15 inch jet planer. It needs just as much TLC and a new mount, but all in good time. I plan to document the restoration, so any tips, tricks, or advice are certainly welcome. The last hand-me-down to make the trailer is pretty special. It's my great-grandfather's toolbox, and inside of it were a few of his old hand tools, including his saw with his handmade handle. His name inscribed on it. Because there's still a massive restoration project and we had a lot of ground to cover, we decided to actually lay the jointer on its side for the trip. But to help mitigate any further harm, I anchored some support blocks under the table. With everything strapped down, it was time for a good night's sleep before our road trip adventure to our new home in the Rocky Mountains. For now, that's a wrap. Next time, we'll start our road trip west, make it to our first pit stop in West Virginia, and I'll use mostly hand tools to make a Greenwood Fisherman's Bench. Until next time.